Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, there comes a time in life when you need to stop broadcasting every detail of your journey. Not everyone needs to know your next move, your challenges, or even your victories. Your future demands silence, strategy, and focus. The ones who thrive in life are those who understand the power of restraint. Let me share eight principles to help you move with wisdom and clarity. There is a sacred power in silence. Purpose is fragile in its early stages, like a seed planted in soil. If you dig up that seed too soon, exposing it to the elements, it won't grow. The same goes for your dreams and assignments. When you share them prematurely, you risk inviting opinions, negativity, and confusion that can derail what has only just begun. Silence provides an environment for clarity. When you speak too early, you allow the noise of the world to interfere with your inner vision. Not everyone will understand your purpose, and if you're not careful, the voices of others can drown out the voice of God and the direction He has for your life. Purpose grows best in stillness, where you can nurture it without the need to explain it to others. Moreover, silence protects you from unnecessary battles. The moment you reveal your plans, opposition will arise. Sometimes the resistance doesn't come from enemies, but from well-meaning people who don't see what you see. Every purpose will encounter resistance, but wisdom teaches you to protect what is still unfolding. The more you speak, the more you invite resistance, but the less you reveal, the more freedom you have to build without interference. Silence also guards your energy. It keeps you from wasting time trying to justify your decisions to people who were never meant to understand. Some battles aren't worth fighting and some explanations are not worth giving. Energy spent defending your dream is energy not spent building it. Lastly, silence trains you in faith. It forces you to trust that what you're building will be revealed in the right season. Faith is not just believing that the outcome will come to pass. It is the ability to move in confidence, knowing that you don't have to announce your journey at every step. Purpose needs room to breathe. Give it time to grow. Give it the protection of silence. And when it's ready, it will speak for itself. True wisdom is not only found in what you say, but in what you withhold. Silence is not an activity, it's strategy. In time, your results will speak louder than any words you could have offered along the way. There is a truth you must accept. Not everyone will understand your journey. And that's perfectly fine. The purpose placed within you is unique, tailored to your experiences, your character, and the assignment you've been given. Expecting others to see what you see or carry the same burden you carry is a recipe for frustration. Vision is personal. It is not a group activity. When you try to make others understand, you expose yourself to unnecessary discouragement. People tend to judge what they cannot comprehend. Even those with good intentions may unintentionally project their fears and limitations onto you. They're not rejecting you, they're reacting to the unfamiliar. And because they can't see what you see, their advice, no matter how well-meaning, may mislead you. You must also understand that purpose is often revealed in stages and people in your life may only witness fragments of the whole picture. If they see only your struggles, they may assume you're failing. If they see only your beginnings, they may underestimate what you're becoming. Don't expect them to celebrate or support what they do not yet understand. Their approval isn't required for your calling to unfold. This is why you need discernment, knowing who to listen to and who to lovingly ignore. Some people are meant to walk with you only part of the way. And that's okay. Not every friend or family member will accompany you into every season of your journey. And trying to drag people along who were not called to go with you will only slow you down. You have to resist the urge to explain yourself to everyone. Trying to make others understand can drain your energy and steal your focus. You don't need to convince anyone of what God has put in your heart. Time will reveal what words cannot. When the fruit of your labor manifests, those who doubt it will see it for themselves. Until then, let them question. Let them wonder. You keep moving. Remember, the vision was given to you, not to them. It's your responsibility to steward it with wisdom and care. The path you walk will be misunderstood. But that is part of the process. Purpose is not always meant to be immediately recognized or applauded by others. Trust that those who need to understand will understand in time. Until then, keep walking. Let your life be the evidence. Wisdom teaches that not everyone deserves access to your thoughts, dreams, or plans. Just because someone is in your life doesn't mean they are the right audience for every season of your journey. 
Knowing when to speak, and more importantly, who to speak to, is one of the greatest safeguards of purpose. Your words carry power, and that power must be entrusted to the right ears. The right audience is not necessarily the closest people to you. Some people love you but still won't understand your vision. Others may mean well but carry insecurities or fears that distort how they interpret your dreams. Wisdom discerns who can handle what you share without contaminating it with doubt, negativity, or misplaced advice. When you speak to the wrong audience, you risk two things, discouragement and distraction. Discouragement comes when you place your hopes in the hands of those who cannot see beyond their limitations. They will tell you what's impossible because they've never seen it done or worse, they've failed in their own attempts. Their words can unknowingly sow seeds of fear into your heart, stifling the boldness needed to pursue what's ahead. Distraction occurs when your energy shifts from building your dream to defending or explaining it. The more time you spend convincing people of what you're doing, the less time you spend actually doing it. Wisdom keeps you focused. It understands that explaining yourself to those not aligned with your purpose is a detour, not a necessity. The right audience doesn't always offer applause, but they offer understanding. They listen, not just to respond, but to support and challenge you in ways that make you grow. They may question you at times, but it's not to undermine your vision, it's to sharpen it. The right audience provides encouragement in private, not just recognition in public. Wisdom also teaches that some things are meant to remain between you and God. There are dreams so delicate that only heaven can hold them until they mature. Some battles must be fought in silence and some victories celebrated in secret. The temptation to overshare can rob you of that sacred space where faith is nurtured and strength is built. Choosing the right audience means accepting that not everyone will have a front row seat to your life. And that's okay. You're not called to prove yourself to everyone. When the time is right, the fruits of your labor will reveal what words could not. Until then, wisdom whispers guard your dreams. Speak with intention and trust that the right people will cross your path at the right time. Momentum is a powerful force, but it's fragile in the early stages. When you begin pursuing a vision or goal, your progress builds like a small stream. It gathers strength quietly and grows over time. The secret to sustaining this momentum lies in privacy. When you move in silence, you eliminate unnecessary interference, allowing your efforts to flow naturally without resistance. Privacy gives you room to experiment, fail, and learn without the pressure of an audience. Growth is rarely a smooth path that's full of mistakes, adjustments, and quiet victories. When every step is public, you may feel tempted to perform for others rather than focus on actual progress. Public opinions, even well-meaning ones, can create distractions that pull you off course. But when you work in private, you're free to focus on what truly matters consistent action. Momentum requires consistency, not applause. Sharing your plans too soon can create a false sense of accomplishment. The praise you receive before anything is fully achieved can trick you into believing you've arrived, causing you to slow down or shift your focus. Privacy keeps you grounded. It forces you to rely on discipline, not validation, to keep moving forward. Privacy also protects you from premature opposition. The moment your progress becomes public, you attract both attention and resistance. Not everyone celebrates growth, some people feel threatened by it. Others may even try to sabotage what they cannot understand or control. When you move in silence, you eliminate unnecessary battles. You protect your energy and allow your work to develop without interference. Momentum thrives in the absence of noise. Think of it like a tree growing underground, its roots are strengthening where no one can see, preparing it to stand firm when it finally breaks through the surface. In the same way, your progress becomes more stable when you allow it to grow quietly. It builds resilience and endurance, qualities that are only developed in the hidden places of life. Privacy allows you to be fully present in the process. When no one is watching, you can focus purely on the work. There's no pressure to announce results before their time. The rhythm of momentum is best maintained in environments where you're not constantly explaining yourself or seeking approval. In privacy, you learn to celebrate small wins for what they are stepping stones to the greater goal. Remember, the goal is not just to start fast, but to finish strong. Privacy gives you the space to maintain focus, conserve energy, and build sustainably. The time for public recognition will come, but by then the foundation will be solid and your momentum will be unstoppable. 
Until that moment, stay quiet, stay steady, and let the work speak for itself when it's ready. Peace is not a product of chance. It is the fruit of intentional boundaries. Without boundaries, life becomes chaotic, relationships become strained, and your inner world is left vulnerable to constant disruption. Boundaries are not walls to keep people out, but gates that protect what is valuable within. They are a means of stewarding your time, energy, emotions, and purpose. When you establish boundaries, you create space for peace to dwell. A life without boundaries is a life ruled by demands. The more accessible you are to everyone's expectations, the more fragmented your peace becomes. Not every invitation deserves a yes, and not every crisis is yours to solve. Boundaries are a way of acknowledging your limitations and reminding yourself that you are not responsible for everything and everyone. Peace flows from the ability to say, this is what I can do and this is where I stop. Boundaries protect your priorities when you allow people, distractions, or even your own desires to constantly intrude on your time, you lose focus on what truly matters. Peace comes from aligning your actions with your purpose and boundaries create the structure that makes this possible. Without them, you'll find yourself stretched too thin, trying to be everything to everyone and missing the things that bring meaning to your life. Emotional boundaries are just as critical. Not everyone has the right to access your inner world. If you allow others to dictate how you feel or manipulate your emotions, your peace will always be at the mercy of their actions. Boundaries allow you to engage with people without losing yourself. They teach you how to love others without neglecting yourself, making room for relationships built on mutual respect instead of resentment. Boundaries also guard your mental space. Peace requires clarity, and clarity can only exist when your mind is free from unnecessary noise. Not every piece of information, conversation, or opinion deserves a place in your thoughts. When you set boundaries on what you engage with, whether it's limiting access to social media or stepping away from negative environments, you protect your mental well-being and preserve your peace. Some of the most important boundaries are internal. Peace isn't just about managing what comes from the outside, it's also about setting limits within yourself. You must establish boundaries with your own habits, thoughts, and behaviors that threaten your growth. This may mean saying no to procrastination, fear, or overcommitment. Self-discipline is a boundary that guards your peace from within, ensuring that your actions align with the life you desire to live. It's important to understand that not everyone will appreciate your boundaries, and that's okay. People accustomed to having unlimited access to you may push back. But boundaries are not about pleasing others, they are about preserving your peace. True peace is found when you learn to honor the limits you set, even if others do not. Boundaries don't close you off, they set you free. They allow you to engage with life from a place of strength, not depletion. When your peace is guarded by clear limits, you move through life with confidence, knowing you are giving your best to what truly matters. Peace thrives not in the absence of responsibility, but in the presence of order, and that order begins with the boundaries you establish. Attention is seductive, but it can be dangerous. It offers the illusion of success without substance, tricking you into believing that visibility equals value. When you begin chasing attention, you risk losing sight of your real purpose. The applause of others can become a distraction that pulls you off course, trapping you in a cycle of performance rather than progress. Attention has a way of shifting your focus from doing the right things to doing what gets noticed. Instead of working quietly toward your goals, you may find yourself seeking validation in likes, comments, or public praise. The danger is that this kind of approval is fleeting, it satisfies momentarily, but leaves you hungry for more. And the more you depend on it, the more you feel pressure to maintain a facade, even if it takes you further from your true purpose. The trap of attention also lies in its tendency to distort priorities. When you start living for the applause of others, you may abandon what matters most in favor of what looks impressive. You may neglect the hard, hidden work required for real growth because it doesn't attract recognition. But it's often the work done in private, the sacrifices, the discipline, the preparation that brings lasting success. Attention focuses on appearances, but true achievement is built from within. Moreover, attention exposes you to the opinions of people who have no stake in your destiny. Not every voice that speaks into your life should have influence. When you become too concerned with how others perceive you, you may start modifying your actions to fit their expectations. This can cause you to lose authenticity, compromising your values just to fit the image others applaud. Attention, if not handled with wisdom, can become a form of bondage, 
where you are constantly performing for an audience that changes with the wind. Another danger of attention is that it can steal your peace. Public visibility brings both praise and criticism, and if you are not rooted in a clear sense of identity, both can sway you. Praise may inflate your ego, while criticism can crush your spirit. True peace comes not from public approval, but from inner alignment with your purpose. When you stop needing constant validation, you free yourself from the emotional roller coaster that attention creates. Attention also breeds comparison. The more you focus on being noticed, the more you are drawn into measuring yourself against others. Comparison robs you of joy and gratitude, shifting your focus from what you have to what you lack. It can cause you to rush ahead of your season, chasing trends or opportunities that aren't meant for you just to keep up with the spotlight. But when you stay rooted in your own process, you allow things to unfold in their proper time. Finally, attention can stall your growth by making you complacent. The praise you receive today may cause you to stop pushing yourself toward what you are truly capable of becoming. It's easy to get comfortable in recognition and forget that the goal is not to impress people but to fulfill your assignment. The trap of attention is that it offers instant gratification but purpose demands patience and consistency. The antidote to the trap of attention is focus keeping your eyes on what truly matters even when no one is watching. Attention is temporary. But the impact of a life lived with purpose is eternal. Resist the urge to seek approval at every step. Let your work grow in silence and let your results speak louder than any applause ever could. When you are anchored in purpose, you don't need attention to validate your journey. You know that what's for you will come at the right time whether anyone is watching or not. Life is not a stage and you are not here to perform for an audience. The essence of your existence is not found in appearances, achievements or applause. When you begin living as though your life is a performance, you risk sacrificing authenticity for approval, mistaking attention for purpose, and confusing image with identity. The pursuit of applause may feel gratifying, but it is shallow and temporary. You were not created to impress others, you were created to fulfill a purpose. A life lived as a performance is exhausting. It demands constant upkeep, always having to be on, always trying to meet expectations that may not even align with who you really are. When you live for the approval of others, you become a prisoner to their opinions. Your decisions are no longer guided by purpose, but by what will gain recognition. The problem with this is that audiences are fickle. People's opinions shift and what pleases them today may not satisfy them tomorrow. If your life is tied to their approval, you'll be trapped in a never-ending pursuit of applause that never truly satisfies. Performing also causes you to neglect the inner work that matters most. In a world obsessed with appearances, it's easy to focus on looking successful rather than being whole. But true fulfillment is not found in how others see you, it's found in how aligned you are with the person you were designed to be. Living authentically means being willing to grow in private, even when no one is watching, because you understand that your worth is not based on what others see, but on who you are becoming. The need to perform can lead to emotional burnout. When your sense of value is tied to how others respond to you, Every interaction becomes a stage and every encounter an opportunity to prove yourself. This leaves little room for vulnerability, rest or real connection. You become so busy acting like you have it all together that you lose the freedom to admit when you're struggling. But peace is found in authenticity, not perfection. Life is not about impressing others, it's about being true to yourself. Living as if life is a performance also undermines real relationships. When you present only the parts of yourself that are polished and impressive, you deny others the opportunity to know the real you. The relationships built on performance are shallow because they are based on who you pretend to be, not who you are. True connection requires honesty, even when that honesty is messy or uncomfortable. The people meant to walk with you will not need you to perform, they will value you for who you truly are. Purpose requires that you live with intention, not for show. A performer plays to the crowd, adjusting to what others want. But those who live with purpose understand that not everyone will applaud their journey and that's okay. Your life was never meant to be a spectacle, it was meant to have meaning. It's not about being seen, it's about being significant. The real work of life often happens in the unseen moments, the quiet sacrifices, the unseen prayers, the inner growth that no one claps for. The freedom to live without performing comes when you realize that your worth isn't tied to what you do or how others perceive you. You don't need to curate your life to fit someone else's expectations. 
There is a unique path designed for you. And it doesn't require the approval of an audience. It requires faithfulness, humility, and the courage to be yourself. Even when the crowd walks away. When you stop performing, you find freedom. You no longer have to chase applause because you understand that purpose isn't a performance, it's a process. Some of the most significant work in your life will happen away from the spotlight. And that's okay. You were not created to impress, you were created to become. The goal is not to be admired by the world, but to live fully and authentically as the person you were meant to be. When you embrace this truth, you discover that the most meaningful applause comes not from the crowd, but from the quiet satisfaction of knowing you lived your life well, even when no one was watching. Revelation is not something you can rush. It comes when the time is right, unfolding like the dawn gradually, not all at once. There's a divine rhythm to life, a process by which everything is revealed in its season. To receive revelation, whether it's about your purpose, a decision, or a deeper understanding of life, you must learn to trust the timing. Trying to force answers prematurely can lead to confusion, frustration, and even misdirection. Revelation comes when you are ready to receive it, not when you demand it. Timing is key because revelation is layered. Some truths are too heavy for you to carry before you have the strength, maturity, or perspective to handle them. Just as a seed grows in the dark soil before breaking through to the surface, understanding often grows in the unseen places of your life, places of struggle, waiting, and quiet preparation. If you try to unearth that seed too soon, you risk destroying the growth that's taking place beneath the surface. Revelation is like that. It needs time to mature in your heart and mind before it can fully manifest. Part of the reason revelation is tied to timing is that you must be positioned properly to receive it. There are seasons in life where you may be too distracted, too rushed, or too preoccupied with your own plans to hear the still small voice of divine wisdom. If revelation were to come during these times, you might miss it or misinterpret it. Timing allows you to be in the right mental, emotional, and spiritual space to not only hear the truth, but to act on it with wisdom. In addition, revelation is often connected to your growth. As you evolve, so does your capacity to understand deeper things. What you may not have understood or appreciated in a previous season becomes clear when you've developed the character, insight, or experience to grasp it. This is why patience is so crucial. You may long for answers today, but the version of you that exists right now might not be equipped to handle what's ahead. Timing ensures that you grow into the kind of person who can receive and properly steward the revelation that's coming. Waiting for revelation also refines your faith. It teaches you to trust in what you cannot yet see to lean not on your own understanding, but on the process of divine timing. Impatience can drive you to premature conclusions, relying on assumptions rather than waiting for clarity. But when you allow time to do its work, you develop a deeper trust in the process. You begin to realize that the delay is not denial, it's preparation. It's in the waiting that you're being shaped, and in the right moment, the revelation will come, bringing with it the answers you need. Timing also protects you. Some truths revealed prematurely could lead to hasty actions that cause more harm than good. Revelation must align with the right season. There is a time to speak and a time to be silent, a time to move forward and a time to wait. Acting on revelation out of season can lead to missed opportunities or unintended consequences. Timing ensures that when revelation comes, it brings the maximum benefit to your life and those around you. Moreover, revelation often unfolds progressively. It doesn't always come as a full picture. Sometimes it's given in pieces one step at a time because that's all you need for the moment. Trusting the process means accepting that you don't have to understand everything at once. The timing of revelation ensures that you receive the right piece of the puzzle when you need it, guiding you steadily toward the full understanding that will eventually emerge. Ultimately, revelation and timing are interconnected because both are tied to purpose. The timing of your revelation is often aligned with the unfolding of your purpose. Certain doors only open when you're ready, and certain insights only come when you've reached the point where they'll propel you forward. When revelation comes in its time, it accelerates you, it gives you the clarity, direction, and confirmation needed to take the next step with confidence. Trust the timing. Don't rush revelation or try to force understanding. Let it come when your heart, mind, and circumstances are prepared to receive it. In the right moment, revelation will come with clarity and you'll know exactly what to do. Until then, trust the process, grow in the waiting, and be patient.
knowing that when the time is right, everything will be revealed. The journey to fulfillment is not a broadcast, it's a sacred walk. Walk wisely and trust that what is for you will find you at the right time. You don't need to announce it, just live it.